A Maysville woman found dead in a burned out home. Investigators say it was no accident. Sheila Davini was murdered. Now, nearly 20 years later, our licensed investigator, Lisa Monahan, is looking into who her killer might be and why. Sheila's case is the next investigation in our cold case series, Deadline. He told her, I'm going to come down there and I'm going to burn you out and there's nobody going to do anything about it. And that's exactly what happened. On January 6, 2004, in Maysville, Oklahoma. They made me settle down, called 911. Because I knew Sheila was in there somewhere. The fire at Sheila Davini's home sent a chill down her mother's spine to rival the morning's record cold. It's eight degrees out. I didn't even know I didn't have a coat so I couldn't feel anything. Susan Davini couldn't see anything either. Her daughter's trailer home was full of smoke. First responders and police were already there. The chief met Susan and her husband out front. I said, have they found Sheila? And he looked at me with tears in his eyes and he said, I don't have that information. It didn't look good. Sheila's car was in the driveway and she wasn't answering her phone. It was just like I knew she was gone. And all I could do was stand there with three people holding me back. David Davini, however, rushed past firefighters hoping for a miracle. I managed to get in, but the ashes were deep and I never found her. No one found her until the smoke finally cleared. Firefighters discovered Sheila on the kitchen floor, burned beyond recognition. At first, it appeared to have been a horrible accident. The medical examiner, however, wasn't convinced. He was asking questions, you know, about her having enemies and things of that nature. It's not clear just what piqued the coroner's suspicions, but an autopsy was ordered to help better understand what had happened to Sheila. While awaiting the results, the Davinis questioned everything. Was Sheila's death an accident or something more sinister? And if it was, was a killer living among them? Sheila had two ex-husbands, one she'd recently split from, the other who had a history of violence. <laughs> Sheila Davini had once been the toast of the town, the cheerleader who married the local football star, Tyson Hendricks. The high school sweethearts wed in 1993 and had two kids together. But five years in, the marriage ended in a bitter divorce and contentious child custody battle. She would not even exchange the children with him here. They had to meet in a public place. She was that scared of him. A judge approved a restraining order against Hendricks after Sheila complained he'd physically abused her and the children, and yet she was still scared. She said, Mom, he's gonna kill me. And I said, he's, Tyson's not gonna kill you, he can't. The deadly fire happened a few days later. Digging deeper into court records, we discovered Hendricks owed Sheila $20,000 in child support, and the court had given him an ultimatum, pay up or go to jail. The money was due January 5th. The next day, she was burnt, killed, and, and uh, we believe she was still alive during the fire. Coincidence or connection? It's a strong theory, but not the only theory. Sheila's second ex, Wayne Braxton, was also in the picture. He'd actually been staying at her place a few nights a week, but he maintains they argued the night before the fire and he left town. More mysteriously, there's been talk of a third companion, someone who may have been jealous, angry over husband number two being back in Sheila's life. In Sheila's last phone call, shortly before the fire started, she spoke of a special friend who had just arrived at the house. The friend was never identified. In fact, no one was questioned for several months. We built a timeline to better understand the case's progression. The OSBI immediately began testing a shred of shirt and a piece of carpet from beneath the body. A few months later, the Davinis met with fire investigators to discuss their growing suspicion of foul play. When did you start to think this is not an accident? Tyson was, uh, had made the threat to burn her out and nobody would ever know the difference. Then the discovery that confirmed the suspicions. Tests showed the presence of a highly flammable liquid in the clothing and carpet samples. And Sheila's autopsy revealed the presence of accelerants in her blood and lungs, indicating Sheila was burned alive. 
the fire marshal's office reversed its opinion from accident to arson. But by then, the burned out trailer and any evidence it contained was long gone. The day after the fire, the divinity say Tyson Hendricks insisted on bulldozing what was left of the home. One neighbor says he seemed nervous. He was running the backhoe just extremely erratically. And he looked straight at me and said, do you think I did this? When you start looking at that timeline, it changes up because when the Divinis hired a private investigator to find some answers, beginning with why their daughter's ex-husband would volunteer to quickly obliterate the crime scene. It'd be a good way to make sure no one ever finds it. Fortunately, the Divinis had the forethought to preserve what little evidence they did have from the scene. Sheila's handwritten notes from visitation. Including these photographs notes. they believe show there were three ignition points in the trailer. One was just above a propane heater in the living room. One was in the kitchen on the floor, and one was in a bathroom. An accidental fire certainly wouldn't ignite in three places. Fire investigators say Hendricks denied any involvement in the fire or Sheila's death, claiming he was at work. We found several witness statements, however, that contradict his alibi. Hendricks's boss says he left work abruptly with an unidentified man around 8 a.m. I thought he would want to know. Sheila's sister-in-law, Betty Devinney, says she called his work right after they found out Sheila had died in the fire. I called and the receptionist said, well, he's not here. He called back and uh, told me he already knew. So there was no way he could have known this was happening. Another witness, Daniel Beck, followed the fire truck to Sheila's house around 10 that morning. Tyson, I believe, was there whenever I got there. Was Tyson Hendricks there before the fire was reported? Only one way to find out. Hello. I'd like to talk with you about your ex-wife's murder. Okay, um, uh, as far as what? I've never been told anything other than the fact that she died in a house fire. You need to look into your source a little better, so. I spoke with your husband about the murder of Sheila Devenny, and it occurred to me no one's asked where you were the morning of the fire. At home. Do you have any idea who killed Sheila Devinney? No. <laughs> no. I thought I was told it was an accident. A multi-county grand jury reportedly didn't get much out of Hendricks, his second wife, or his brother when it took up the case in 2006. The grand jury didn't return any indictments, was critical of the initial investigation, and asked for more information on potential suspects. Since then, the OSBI has been working to do more forensic tests on evidence that's still available. Special Agent David Gatlin is handling the cold case. Nobody reported anything at Sheila's house that morning. That's, that's Gatlin right says he's working to get phone records that were sealed by the grand jury. You say you were here. Let's see if we can put you there at that date and time and kind of rule you out of being a suspect. OSBI won't say who they're targeting, but hopes to make an arrest soon. She came to school and we took that picture. The Davinis, meanwhile, remain determined and undaunted, now almost 19 years after losing their daughter. You can always feel when you lose a family member. But somehow, between the two of us, our fight goes on. On Deadline, Lisa Monahan, Oklahoma Zone, News 9.